everyone and well workshop seven my name is only before that workshop seven we've also got uh, Bra evangelist paul for a day and we have got our facilitators um ready to take us through the journey of unnessing the power of ai for christian content creator i will turn over now to Bra paul Hello, fellow ministers. I welcome you once again to this workshop. And my name is Omolulu Kushimo, and I'll be the lead facilitator here in this workshop. I also have a presentation that I'll be making. And we're looking at harnessing the power of AI for Christian content creation. As drama ministers and as Christian filmmakers, it is up to us to always improve. Bible makes us go, makes us understand that we keep moving from glory to glory, which means we are also subject to improvement. We must, we can't afford to stay in the same place. So when new things come in the industry, new things come that enable us to do the work that we're doing, propagating the gospel, that it makes it possible for us to do these things even better. It's advisable that we latch onto it. It's advisable that we latch onto it. Let's be like the sons of Issachar that understood the times and the seasons. And the time and the season of now is, is that of tech. Everything is tech based. Everything is digital. Everything is going way advanced. The way we used to do things in the past has now been made faster and even easier thanks to the advent of AI and so many other technologies that have come to stay. So this is the opportunity to grab what we can. We thank God for the Mount Zion, Mount Zion Alumni International Christian Film Festival. Um, this is an opportunity for us to share knowledge, to enlighten ourselves, and to help ourselves to grow in these areas. And one of such, which we th we're thankful for in this workshop, is that of the advent of AI, harnessing the powers of AI for Christian content creation. All right, so without wasting much time, um, before I continue, I'd like uh, my AI friend here to give a brief welcome. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, Lulu started with an AI tool called Recraft AI to create me. This is initially how I looked. He wanted me to look different, so he took my image to an AI site called Fukos um, Lab sorry, on Google. It was here that he took my image and changed my face from this to this. This is the same site where he changed Yemisi's clothes. Remember Yemisi? She's the one who did the IDMC promo with Paul. So, he then recorded his voice on another AI site called Eleven Labs and picked a texture so it sounds exactly like I sound now. So, initially this voice you're listening to was Lulu's voice, but now it's my voice, it's Shadi's voice, okay? Then he uploaded my image on an AI site called Hedra.com and uploaded this audio generated on Eleven Labs, he uploaded this audio on Hedra alongside the image and gang. Here I am now. The rest is history. All right. Thank you, Shadi. Well, <laughs> many of me have been laughing at what you just saw, but you know, it's all tried. It's part of being creative. We have, we serve a God who is very creative. So we as a student, we also be creative. So I decided to be a bit creative in that presentation. Now going forward to my prayer. Going forward on my presentation because I know I have limited time. Um, let me see. Just hold on a second. Let me put up my slides. So I'll be taking you on leveraging AI in audiovisual content creation. Um, like I said, it's it's uh, AI has come to stay. Like we need to understand the advantages of AI creation, AI in content creation. 
especially for Christians now. Um, it offers several advantages in content creation, and it's something that makes the process faster. Automation and repetition of tasks, AI handles it easily, and AI is something that helps and assists in generating ideas. These things are not new, but I just felt I should just put it here so that you will have an idea of what it entails. Right, so um, advantages in AI creation also, it helps with speed um, and efficiency. The things that, like I said earlier, the things that would take time to do, you know, there was a time that video was being recorded on VHS cassettes, and at the time later it became on CDs, and now I'm just dealing with data and just transfer easily. And it's not easier to even shoot something, edit it and get it done quickly. I've had a number of times when I've had to shoot videos and quickly do the editing, either on my phone or quickly at home within a day, something that would have taken several days in the case of in the past. So efficiency and speed is something that AI has helped us to improve on. Cost effectiveness, you know, with AI, a lot of human resource that you would have put into producing something has been reduced. You know, you don't have to worry about labor costs and viral production time. There are things that you can produce on yourself by just sitting on your seat and generating all by yourself. And one of the other things about it is that it enhances our creativity. With AI tools, we can explore new ideas and visualizations. It's not to say that we should leave everything to AI, but we should use it as a tool. Not that it should become something that we are totally giving everything to. Let's remember that. Okay. And... In AI Christian content creation now, right now, the things that I feel right now that the AI on board is good for, they are good for promos and adverts, they are good for skits and short films, and they're also good for creative application when necessary. You know, if you are shooting a movie and you need AI to do not part of the refining of the movie, not the entire thing, because the AI have come across so far, may not be able to do overall. I mean, if you have a movie of two hours to apply AI on it, may take some time. It may you may, you may need, I mean, AI is still going through its growing phase. It's still developing. Every day, it keeps changing. One of the things I've realized is every time, from the last time we had the film festival and we had a workshop on AI, what I discovered was that what was, what we discussed in the last system, from that time till now, a lot has changed. Even in the AI apps and the tools that I presented in that period, a lot of them have changed. And Things are now different the way they are. There's a lot of difference happening now. So, all right. So, I want to first of all start by looking at videos that I've created with AI. And we'll I will now explain what I was able to do creating each of these videos. We don't have, this is a workshop where we don't have time to really show you the process of doing that. That will have to be for another uh, training entirely. Um, but this is basically for us to have the idea of how we can use AI in Christian content creation. Now, this is one of the contents that I've created with it so far. It's uh, It was for the International Drama Ministers Convention. And just watch the video. Every evangelical drama and movie making has the same aim, to spread the gospel and to reach out to souls across the nations through drama and movies in their different forms. That is why International Evangelical Drama Ministers and Movie Makers is coming up with 2024 International Drama Ministers Convention. Get ready for explosive power, explosive growth, and explosive evangelism. Get, Get ready, ready for, for explosive, explosive expansion. expansion. It's happening from July 31st to August 3rd, 2024. All, All right, so I want to just stop here. And what I just want to point here is everything that was done here. Now, the first thing here is Recraft AI, as you can see up here. That is the app or the AI site that was used to create these images of these characters. We were used to create these images of these characters. And after they were used to create these images, um, Big Good AI, that's the motion capture AI, that, that was what was used to create the movements of, this in, of these characters. Then uh, the background music is from the free music library that I already have. You know, there are a lot of few free music library online that one can get. Uh, but there's also the opportunity of creating your own music that personally belongs to you on AI. We'll come to that later. Um, so along with that, I also had a background. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. This is wrong. The background here is actually also by Recraft AI, not by YouTube. I forgot to change that. Uh, it's also by Recraft AI as we see up here. So I created the background using Recraft AI, just like I created the character. And then I put it in um, Adobe Premiere where I was able to blur the background 
so as to give some aesthetics to the characters as they prevented as they presented. The idea was to give background like a studio, create a, a sort of studio feel ground so that it looks as though they were in a studio presenting. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is Eleven Labs. Now, Eleven Labs was in the case of this video. Eleven Labs is where this voiceover comes in. If you listen carefully. Happening from July 31st to August 3rd, 2024, all on Zoom. The meeting I did. Now, that voiceover was actually my voice. I voiced it. I took it to Eleven Labs, which is an audio voiceover production AI. And from there, I was able to switch my pitch to that of a female. I changed it. There are voice, voice, voice changer. There's a voice changer option that allows you to change the voices. I was able to change the voice to that of a female. And that is possible. That makes, you see what that has done. That has actually eradicated me. I remember when we wanted to create a number of uh, intros and uh, productions for um, presentations, I think in MZIIF. And I was trying to get female voiceover artists and nobody was available. I just went and then I came across this and said, oh, let me just, I just voiced it, then turned it to a female. So you can imagine what you can do with this. You can create several characters because you have several voice textures. Forward. So here is behind the scenes. Um, here you can see our major characters as the. Here we have our brother Paul Ishukufo Riyadi. He was the one who did this character, and this was where. Get was ready for explosive expansion. So that was where he had to do his part. He had to record on chroma. Now the idea is basically you have to have a blank and clear background. I just decided. I need to call my phone. Every evangelical drama and movie making has the same aim to spread the gospel and to reach out to souls across the nations. And one other thing I want to mention is uh, you don't have to be, you, know, you don't have to be like a Adobe Premiere person to be able to do. You can use other editing apps. One of the ones I'll, I'll recommend is CapCut, which is free to an extent. And uh, you are able to use. Uh, CapCut is a good one. In fact, I've started using CapCut to make things faster because, you know, sometimes Adobe Premiere may be, uh, it may be graphics intensive and may really be overusing your CPU at times. So here's the second video I created with AI. Uh, in this case, the character here looks more human and it was done for uh, a promo for a worship concert. I'll just play it and then explain it as well. Get ready for an unforgettable evening of praise and worship. Light up with more concert, freeze them atmosphere of worship join us on the 14th of september 2024 from 4 p.m to 8 p.m at 2 coleridge street Kensington, liverpool l6 6bs featuring ministers and powerful voices pastor blessing or sagging reverend wande Badogu, minister kenneth righteousness minister deborah taibu minister deji sat for Owen, and the sensational light of liverpool choir also featuring pcbc choir alive believers choir layer sax and many more don't miss the atmosphere of worship where hearts are lifted and lives are transformed. See you there. In the atmosphere of worship, heaven touches earth. All right, so this one basically was done using the character was generated using this AI tool called CG Dream AI. Now, CG Dream AI is just like Minecraft AI, you can use it to generate images, but one, the difference between that is CG Dream has some serious high definition colors to its own generation. Uh, although it has some limitations, but it's also an option besides Recraft AI. And I liked using it. Uh, it's, it's also a good one to create. That was what I was, that's what I used to generate this image of this lady. And the motion capture as usual, as, as, as usual is Google AI. Um, then that's basically to capture the movement. So we'll speak behind the scenes to have an idea of what it looks like then. There is Suno. Suno is a music production site, AI site, where you can produce music. Now, the music you hear in the background, if you listen to it, let me play it for me. The atmosphere of worship, where hearts are lifted and lives are transformed. See you there. In the atmosphere of worship, heaven touches earth. So that song actually was a full length song. Uh, I created it in Suno AI. I wrote the lyrics and imputed it using the theme of the concert, Atmosphere of Worship. I indicated the texture of the song and everything and the title and I think a bit of the lyrics and it expanded it and it was able to give me that song. It gave me different options before I eventually settled for the one that is playing in the song. For the background, 
the yani the beautiful background that you're seeing. Sad it's sad just gotten from YouTube. There are a lot of free backgrounds I can download on YouTube. But I come up with something beautiful and worth presenting. Um, I just want to note that there are still motion. Uh, the Vigo AI still has some slight lapses. Uh, that um, maybe with proper editing, one can just overlook those things. Uh, if you look at the video, at some point, there were places where the ladies' hands was multiplying. 14th of September, 2024, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Ah, at 2. Now. There was a place where the hand multiplied or so. So it's not perfect. The AI is not perfect. Okay, here, there we are. See that it's multiplying. The AI is not perfect. And it's still something that is in development. As an editor, if you are that creative, you can look for ways you can bypass those areas. Maybe what I would have done if I had noticed on time was to cut this area so that we won't see this hand in the text. I was hurrying to do it. So, but by the time I sent it, it was too late. And still, the people who received it, they liked it. They said it was nice. And maybe because it was small on the phone, they didn't really notice it. Okay. So that's that with this one. Yes. Um, behind the scenes. This is how it Come and be part of this glorious evening as we lift up our voices in unity and worship. So she did the character. Now she had to wear a, what's it called? This um, hair cover so that the hair does not, because one thing about using V good is that try and use a character that is close to the stature of the person, your actor or actress. And, okay, this one, I just decided to put this one here. I didn't want to put it before, but <laughs> I said, let me put it here for the sake of this particular app, image background remover. I needed to do a promo and I didn't have enough time and I needed to quickly put something together because the day that morning I was rushing to do something. I said, okay, let me just put something together and send. So I decided to do this. I, in fact, okay. So, hi, fellow drama ministers. Are you ready for Thursday? Let's meet and I'll teach you how to do this. I'll teach you how to do this or this or this. Whichever one you want. I'll be there expecting to see. You no, know, if I that day, I'd, I'd still, there was still sleep in my eyes, but I just rushed and put it together. That this character was done using Recraft AI. This one was also Recraft AI. This one was, I think this one was CG Dream. And this one was CG Dream. This is the best of the characters that I, I can look at because I like the way his animation moved. Whichever one you want. Only when I recorded it, I had to record it in my backyard and I didn't have um, a chroma then. Yeah, I remember that I was going to put a background, this bluish background, which is basically from YouTube, the background from YouTube. I was going to put it there and I needed my background to be chroma as in green like this to be able to do. So how did I do that? I was able to use Runway ML. Now Runway ML is the, is the app, is the AI site that you can use to just remove the background from here. So what happened was, hello, I was able to just remove all my background from the sites, all this background there, and isolate myself. That would have been done using After Effects, Adobe After Effects, or maybe in, even, even in Adobe Premiere. But this AI makes it so fast and so quick to just remove it. This was a video that I did for Mount Zion Health Outreach. And the key AI here is the one called Hedra. Let's take a look at it. As we all know, as drama ministers, we are very, very busy. We have a great and urgent mandate to reach the whole world for Christ with a message preached through drama and films. Basically, is Hedra. Hedra is an app, is an AI site that allows you to, uh, to generate image and also animate it. Now, in animating, you can decide to add your own voice or you can ask the AI to create a voice for you. Now, the voice that you're hearing actually belongs to Dr. Bumi Akinbelu. But, uh, you know, because I used that voice, I just used that second name as Victoria Akinbelu reported so that since it's a different looking person. So uh, she did the voice, but this was the AI that was generated. This human, this lady is an AI generated character. When I generated it, it had a background that came with it. I had to use Runway, the background remover in Runway ML to remove it. This background music was generated using Suno, the same Suno AI that I used to create the music in the other video I show. And the background that you see here was generated using 
Oh, okay. The background was sorry. It was generated with Recraft. Sorry, I still forgot to change it. This is supposed to be Recraft. So it was generated using Recraft AI, and it was animated using Hyper AI. Hyper AI is another is a is a website is a AI site where you feed an image and give it instruction to animate that image. Now I. I usually don't like using a hyper to just try and animate human beings because it just warps them and messes them up. But when it comes to backgrounds, you know, like if you look at this image now, you can see we have a great. You can see the sky is moving. The trees are also moving, but because it's blood, you can't notice. But the sky is moving. There's slight changes to show a bit of realism in it. So with this hyper AI, I was able to generate that. So took the image from Recraft. I'm sorry, I. I still want you to be supposed to be recraft. I took that image to IPI to make this move and then I blurred it and placed it on it so it looks realistic. There's a project that I tried with along with Sister Dollar Omonira. We tried to see whether we can create a short video, like a short drama with, uh, with AI. So we created, so these characters were created and we had uh, the, the, brother and sister, the event, these are fellow brother and sisters act the role. And um, although it's still, it's still subject to perfection because it's not giving us exactly what we want, but at least what are you packing? It made an, there was, an, we have so much. there was, there was, not... um, it managed to give us something. You can see this character here is this lady, sister, I've forgotten her name, sister Busola. And then uh, this other lady, she's the one standing here. So this well, this is where they recorded the video in a green screen room, and I was able to try and do as much editing as I could using the AI. It's um, because of the fact that it wasn't it was shot and sent to me, and I had to edit it. I wasn't there to direct. Uh, probably it would have would have shot it in a different way that would have made it better. So these characters were generated, this one and that one, and they were used to represent them both. It's still subject to exploration still looking at what can be done with it but all that was created using this even this background that you see here the background that you see here was also done with ai um oh okay sorry the background that you see was created using recraft ai for the background and it was hyper that i used to gentle animate the background so that you can see the flags are flapping flags are flapping and the, the sky is moving Although it gave me only four seconds of generation, I had to merge them together. So, but if I paid for it, it would probably allow me for longer duration. Okay. But as you can see the clouds are moving little by little. So it's just that's what I was able to do with that. Now, going forward, I would like to mention this honorable because I got some honorable mentions because uh, I used them recently too. Um I don't even know what to call this one. <laughs> the site is a funny site. Maybe it's a research site or whatever, but it's called fullcoursolab.ipynb. Uh, it's a, I think it's 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 part of a system called stable diffusion. But once you just type fullcoursolab, you can do whatever you want to do with it. Now, what this site allows me to do, the AI site allows me to do, is to generate images based on existing character. It's you can you can put the picture of somebody there and change how they look, change. How they look, maybe change the address or change basically images. But what I used it to do was this is a video uh, that was done by Mount Zion Health and it, it's for um, mental, how I unwind mentally. So this is a video I did with uh, Brother Ebenezer, Evangelist Ebenezer. So what happened is as he was as he was telling the story of, as he was telling us how he unwinds, there was need for me to illustrate what it looks like. So what I did was I took his image and told the AI to try and replicate his face of him talking to his wife because he was saying how he unwinds, he discusses with his wife. So the AI created this image and just put the lady there, it's representing like his wife, as when he's talking to his wife. And another way he says he likes listening to music, the AI created it with his face. And then uh, this is okay, this is another way he was talking about his dying. The AI also took his face. And this is another sister. She was talking about her own how she unwinds going to places. The AI was able to take her face and recreate her going to an event and also reading her Bible like we have here, the AI was able to do so. And um, also with Brapo, the AI was able to create him having a nap. Where he was saying how he relaxes is to have a nap. And there was another place where he says he likes to laugh in the midst of people, like you see here. You see him in the midst of people laughing. The AI created it. And then uh, he also talked about swimming. So that's what this uh, site is able to do, help you to recreate and change the way things look and people look. Uh, 
like um, you saw you saw it in a uh, video where the AI character of Shadi was talking and talking about how I was able to use it to change the dress of the MEC. Sorry, I gave my AI character's name so <laughs> so, so like I identify with the AI. Well, the invitation here is a dream machine. Luma AI is dream machine. Now, dream machine is another wonderful AI that all you need is an image. You feed in the image and then you give it instruction on what to do with that image. It's just like what Hyper does. But I like the way dream machine animates. It's way better than Hyper. Now, here, this, there are three images here. Okay, this one started moving. So, actually, the thing is, this is a static image. This is the main image. This is an animated one. Now, this image was generated by Recraft AI, but when I put it into Luma, Luma was able to do this with it, cause the character to walk forward. Of course, I described it. I said the character should walk forward as if she wants to make a presentation. So she's walking forward, although I didn't give it instruction for the hands and all that. That's what it did here. And in this one, I asked that the lady should just turn and be pointing. And in this case, oops, sorry. <laughs> in this case, we have her doing that here. She's just turning, but she's turning in the same place. All these, these two were generated from the static character. So that's basically all I, do, all I have to say concerning this AI tools. Um, magnificent day. I mean, you can do so much with them. You can do so much with them. And in this time, it's time for us to latch on, latch on and make use, good use of all these tools to be able to propagate the gospel. I can't really explain the old I want to do demonstrations, demonstrate how this is done, how that is done. But one cannot really say it all. One cannot really say it all. Um, the little demonstration that I showed in um, the video before this one, um, where my AI character Shadi was talking, explains a bit of it. But this workshop is not enough for us to demonstrate everything. But you can do much more. We can do much more with it. And maybe the best way is to have a proper training session. And I think uh, we have uh, Stadola has a uh, Stadola. I think if I'm right, Stadola, we have a, an AI boot camp that should be coming up soon sometime. Supposed to come this year before the film festival, but we're not able to do it. But hopefully we'll do that AI boot camp. Uh, we should all just stay tuned and be watching out so that we can start learning these things. It's good because all these things that I've just shown you, I have to take time to study them, learn them, troubleshoot, do a lot of things here and there. There are a lot of Oh, these are just some that I picked. There are so many others that I have done, but I just can't include everything for the sake of time. Um, let us... Uh, so, I want to join us to just be on the lookout. Um, there's a WhatsApp group for those of us interested in AI. Um, I'll leave it to Stardola. I think uh, Stardola or our organizers will have a way of having meetings and boot camps where we can do proper AI trainings, AI trainings and deep ones where you'll be able to learn these things properly. Because it's better you learn sometimes uh you want to do it yourself you may get discouraged because you don't have an idea but for those who have editing skills you're an editor before you might have an idea but you that you're just starting up this is a good opportunity also for you to learn and even if you're an editor to also learn this is an opportunity please don't share my ideas so i hope with all this i've been able to uh spark up your interest and inspire you to become part of this new production revolution for making christian content creation taking Christian content creation to another level. Thank you. All right. Good day, everyone. I am Bumi Ajagono. Today, I'll be taking us through AI for content creators, and I will be specifically speaking about content creation for kids. Now, when we talk about content creation for kids, we're looking at our audience being children, right? Um, the whole idea of getting into this environment, or I would say this space, is because um, without thinking too much, it is a no-brainer that the world has um, pumped in a lot of immorality, a lot of inappropriate content, even in the cartoon space, in the animation space, in the kids' books space, in pretty much every innocent space that we have for children. And it's high time that we as Christians take the bull by the horn and ensure that we're bringing the Bible to life 
for our children and our children can see what the bible says they should see they should say they should do where they should go rather than what the world says and how best can we do that than bringing out content that brings the bible to life so this is where i come in i'm going to show you how to create content for children um, specifically for this session i will just be focusing on children's books and the reason why i'm focusing on children's books is because you start with um writing creating a book for kids that are captivating and then you move on to like um, it could be a regular picture book then you can move on to like a, um, a comic book and then you can move on to animation cartoons and, and the likes and when we look at it in to be honest with you cartoons nowadays are not only for kids as in it's not only kids that watch cartoons. you find teenagers you find even adults enjoying cartoons so it's a wide audience and um, while I was in Nigeria last week, um, I watched the channel's television and the audience for that interview was um, Muiwa Kayode. And Muiwa Kayode mentioned something. He said, for the animation industry, you know, for those who want to invest, the best thing for them to invest in right now, the best industry for them to invest in right now is the animation industry. And I was like, because he's trying to market the animation industry. What else would he say? But I went on to be like, you know what? For all it takes, let me just Google it and check, you know, all of the billions of dollars that he was trying to quote in there. And this is what I got. On the screen, you can see just regular Google. I said, what is the future of the animation industry in US dollars? And the response is the global animation market size is growing from $436 billion in 2024, which is this year, to $895 billion. What are we talking about? We're talking about more than $150 billion in 10 years. All right. Let's say, well, that is not our space. That is globally. So it doesn't really affect Nigeria. Let's clone in on Nigeria. I went in there and I said, so what is the future of the Nigerian animation industry in US dollars? Man, Yep. According to Globe and Mail, it says, looking forward, the group expects the market to reach $17.8 billion by 2032. And it should exhibit a growth rate of 7.78%. Now, according to CG Africa, it's an annual, they should experience an annual growth rate of 20%. You know, <laughs> This is almost like a no-brainer. It's almost like asking, so what are you waiting for? You know, and it's not rocket science to understand what to do, how to do, when to do, and all of that. And that's where I come in today. I'm going to teach you how to start, continue, create, publish, market, and all of that, everything in between. And I'm going to do it pretty quick so that we, we are able to cover as much as we need to cover within the time allotted for me. And let's dive in. So where do I start? As usual, everybody will say, it's chat GPT, chat GPT. It's taking, you know, as in this an exponential growth in it. There are different updates coming up. Yes, I agree. So I know quite a few of us or quite a lot of us are already conversant with ChatGPT. So I'll start with that. But really, there are so many other platforms that you can use um, that are very similar to ChatGPT. There's ChatGPT, there's Meta AI, there's Cloud AI, and there's, there's just quite a few out there. So for those of you who are conversant with um, ChatGPT, or even if you're not conversant with ChatGPT, I'm going to share my screen um, and just show you basically what to do. You log into ChatGPT, and then you put your prompt. Now, for me, I was like, I want something unique, and I want something different. Think about your niche. What do you want? What's the goal? What's the, what's the big picture? So when you know what the big picture is and you then clone down, get the details of things that you want, write down things that you you really want to do, um, what, the, what the process is or what the message you're sending is. So for me, in this particular um, example that I'm going to give you, 
I'm thinking of, you know, bringing the Bible to life with regards to the fruits of the Spirit. So I started with kindness. So I wrote a book on kindness, but how did I start it? I went into ChatGPT and all I did was write me a Christian folktale because I want all my books to have a piece of culture. In, in them. So they're all going to be Christian folk tales. They're all going to bring the Bible to life. They're all going to teach the children something, at least one thing positive. So ChatGPT gave me this response. It gave me the title of a book, the first book. Mind to say that when I wrote Write Me a Christian Folk Tale, there was there were many. So the first one is the humble shepherd's blessing. And then it told me about once upon a time in the village nestled in rolling hills in Judea. And it mentioned, you know, Micah and it mentioned, you know, um, Joseph. And I thought to myself, I said, I really like this story. So what did I do? Because I wanted to be a folk tale from Africa, Micah won't work as a name. So I changed it to Amino. You know, so I had this story, which is pretty much what I would start with. Um, of course, there were many others. I told you, yes, I love it. Tell me another one. And it just kept on going and going. Tell me another one, another one, another one, another one. And it just kept on giving me stories. So you can start with ChatGPT and get the stories that you want. You know, what niche do you want? Tell it what you want. Mine is a Christian folk tale. What's yours? Um, it could be the same. It could be different. But pick something unique that you know that, oh, I know that there's a thirst and there's a hunger for this in the market. So what did I do next? So I picked this and next I got the story. I thought about the things that I wanted to do differently. Um, and when I say differently, I'm talking about the names I want to change and things like that. So I'm going to show you what I did. I went into Canva and the Canva is um, Canva.com. So when you go into Canva, you get you know, the templates and, and stuff like that. Um, it could be children's book that you write or a template on children's book. So you got, I got a template on children's book and then I started off populating everything that I had in my story from ChatGPT. So this is ChatGPT. It's telling me once upon a time in a small village nestled in the rolling hills of Judea. So I came to um, um, Canva and I got a template, children's books template, and then I started my story. Once upon a time in a small village nestled in the rolling hills of Gumbi. So rather than Judea, I changed it to Gumbi. There lived a humble shepherd named Amino. You remember that my ChatGPT story was a humble shepherd named Micah. So the intriguing thing for kids' books is that this whole thing, though it looks a little short for a book, is pretty long when you actually break them down into paragraph by paragraph. Um, when you break them down into paragraphs, it helps, you know, get that story out there in little bits because what are you trying to do you're trying to feed little minds and you don't want them to get bored by all the wordings and all of that so you need to make sure that you're bringing in not just the wordings but you're also bringing in pictures something that they can relate to so as you continue to build your story make sure to plug in pictures there and you might wonder so how did i get all of these pictures and that's where the next step comes in so like i had mentioned when you click on um canva for those who are not conversant with canva canva is canva.com when you go in there you can have a free account or you can have a paid account my account is a paid account i have the canvas canva teams but honestly you really can get the free account and you can get so much in there um i think there are like two million templates in there or more they pride themselves in um, a platform that has one of the most templates in there and honestly i agree with the free um option you really do have a lot and when i say that you come in here and search what you want you just search it up here you know a children's book something like that and you just pick you know a template that you like anything you know so this is a template that you can use it also gives you different things so you can use any of these templates customize it once you click on it and you and you then want to um what do you call it? You don't want to customize the template. You just click on customize the template. And for those who have never really used Canva and no conversation with Canva, all you just need to do is to double click and type over, you know, the humble shepherd. Or you can see, yeah, the humble shepherd. And then every other thing will just, you know, as in you just continue, to, you can change the picture, you can leave the picture, you, or if it's the girl that you're talking, you know, the girl, you, 
just just basically teaching you how to customize and then you build it out there when you want to add a page you click here to add a page when you want to add text it's on the left hand side you can add as much text as you want in the same format as you want there are some um font combinations that usually are recommended use one when you're using the other and so much more but that's not the crux of this anyways back to where we were so that's how I started building this and I continued my story. Every day he tended to his flock. So basically when you look at um, the story, you can see that I have already put in everything. More, more, more like everything, but not everything because there were some things that I left out and there were some things that I um, sort of twisted and there were other things that I just kept as is because they were fine. So for those ones, you could see that my first page was just this. So it wasn't even up to a paragraph. It was like, one sentence and the next page was every day he turned it to his flock guiding them through lush you know as in so you can see how i have broken it down so basically that is what i do for the text and anytime you want to add text what you just need to do is to hover on this add no that's duplicate sorry so when you hover on this this is duplicate if you want to duplicate the same thing but if you want to add a you just click add and then it adds a template and then you can add your text into it and then you put in what you want in there as you make it bigger you can just you know make it bigger all right so i'm going to delete that page we don't need it so that's pretty much it for excuse me that's pretty much it for the wordings so you continue to build and build and build when you have finished putting in your wordings you have an idea of what you want when it comes to the pictures as in the images and when i say what you want when it comes to the images is because you have already broken down your wordings and you sort of have an idea of okay so the next thing i want these kids to see these children to see when they're actually um looking at this is maybe the valley or a lush town or you understand as in you have an idea of what you're looking to get for the children to actually have and so when you do that it's pretty much asking for okay i want a prompt for all of these things so how would i get prompts for this and it's easy to do that as well so what you do is you can ask chat gpt can you please give me prompts for it and i'm going to show you something and how, I, how i'm going to do that so you can write something like this so i'm still in chat gpt you see generate 25 image prompts for the humble shepherd's blessing story so you have you remember that you already had your story and it remembers you know your story and all of that it will tell you what prompts to use um in there so it will tell you a serene hillside is one um somebody lying under a starry sky a clue okay so i'm going to show you what my book looks like so this book we come back to it we have a menu here you have already put that prompt into the platform that you want and what platform did i use i used ideogram for it um, and the reason why i used ideogram for it is because for the testings of um, ideograms the pictures i saw um, were okay you know and they sort of gave me the feel the feel for um, an african it sort of gave me the feel for an african you know work and that's why i liked it it wasn't overly realistic but i enjoyed it and i liked it that way and that was why it sort of looked like painting and it was because of what i had already um requested for it to be so what i did was i went into ideogram so ideogram is spelled i d i i d e o g r a m ideogram.ai so when you go into idea ideogram.ai Okay, let me state again that Ideogram is a free app as well. So when you go into Ideogram, sign up. If you've never been to Ideogram, sign in if you already have an account with Ideogram. And then you are then good to go. All right. So with that said, when you are inside Ideogram and you have already signed in, you will be able to put your prompts into the, your into your um, window and the places you put the prompt into are here so you put the prompt into here where it says describe what you want to see and basically what you want to see is you know the hillside and it's you know in gombe and, and things like that um so basically what i did here was 
I had already put in all of the things that I needed and I had already um, come up with my images. And for you to be able to see um, my images, you just go into um, things that you have done before. So it will, once you click on here, this on the top right, I don't know whether you can see that. On the top right, you'll see my images and it will take you to all of the images that you have already, excuse me, all the images that you have already um prompted to have something in there so you can see the different images and all of that i'm just going to click on you know one of the images um i'll double click on it all right okay so i'm going to click on it and just say um i want to edit i'll say use prompt all right so use prompt basically shows me what the prompt i used is so for this particular one i said i want a captivating photograph of a 42 year old amino he's an african man with an oval face narrow jawline dark full lips and dark caramel skin his light brown eyes shine with excitement da 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 blah 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 a few things there and then it produced this um, if you want consistent characters and consistent images, make sure that you name your character. Um, after describing Aminu with long face and oval face and everything, Aminu. The next prompt that you have, Aminu has, you know, so that your um, AI app knows, okay, you have already described this person and this is the person you are describing. Sometimes you might, this is the person that you are requesting, so sometimes you might also need to continue to add those details. So just like you had that, he had an oval face, Aminu, he's 42 years old. So you leave all of those and then, you know, add to what you want. Aminu is backing the camera or Aminu is facing a woman who is round face dark skin you know as in something like that that way it will give you the similar face of amino it might not be exactly the same but overly similar so you can see this and this are very similar this and this are very similar you know as in so you, this and this are very similar like identical twins so it's basically the prompt that you give it that you will get back okay so back to the humble shepherd so i come here and after i do all my prompts and all of that i bring in all my images one by one the prompts are pretty much you know little by little i bring them in and i and i type them and i paste them into um the pages so you remember i already had put all my text in the book so it was a book let's assume it was like a 30 page book now i start adding pictures in between each of the pages because for children what they want to see is they want to see the words and then they want to see the corresponding picture that's what captivates them and so what i did in this particular um, regard is once i have a page then i put a picture i have a page i put a picture i have a text i put a picture like that um you might want you might you might agree with me that many times if you have a very good children's book and you're reading that children's book as a bedtime story to a child it's before the child sleeps, the book might have ended. Why? Because the child is looking to see, oh, let me see the picture. Oh, let me see the picture. Why? Because it's captivating. They want to see the picture that relates to, you know, the text that you have written. And that's where all of the imaging comes in. So you can use ChatGPT, Meta AI, and um, Claude AI, and a few others for the text. For the imaging, you can use Canva directly, you can use Ideogram, you can use even Meta AI as well. And so when I say you can use Meta AI, Meta AI will give you, you know, a few options for your text, which I like very much because it sort of helps you, you know, it gives you like four options on what you want. All right. So we'll continue with that. And that gives us a book. So this is what we have now. You know, it shows everything, the hillside, the countryside. It shows the weary person. It shows everything, you know, the images that we want. After we have done this, what we then do is that we then download. So you download and then you pick that you want it to be in PDF print. Remember PDF print because you want to print it, you want to publish it, correct? Yes, correct. So you print it and then you um flatten it and make sure that you make it bleed 
um that's usually important for it is not compulsory it's not like a requirement but it's recommended that you make it bleed just in case your pictures are smaller than it's expected at least it bleeds out in, and it fills the whole page so that you don't have some spacing at the edges so you flatten your pdf and then you download once you have downloaded that you make sure that you have the right sizing and everything once you have downloaded the next step is for you to publish your book um depending on what you want you can either publish your book and then market it or you can market it to people to let them know this book is going to be published soon i'm going to release a book on da -da 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 day because on amazon you can also you know have a, an early release date so let's do that how do we do all of this on amazon it's called kdp so we're going to type in kdp um here so on your browser you have kdp.amazon.com and what kdp does is that kdp will give you the opportunity to publish your book so if you've never used kdp it will ask you to sign in sign on and all of that put in your details put in your bank account so put in your details putting your bank bank account um the options for your bank account um and ensure that everything is there correct it will also ask you information with regards to your taxes you know as where do you want your taxes to be paid are they going to be paid in us dollars are they going to be paid so when you go into your account it is what kind of account is this it's an individual account and um, where how do you want to receive your money do you want to receive it in canadian dollars us dollars naira <laughs> whatever you want you know and then you put in your um account details so every time you have royalties to be paid amazon will automatically pay into that account so every time i always see every time i always see the sales in there from amazon i know that this is a sale of one of my products on amazon um i also have a seller account for another product entirely for one of my or for, for the company that i have but for this one this is the one for the book all right so with with all of that said this particular page i got i got it click by clicking on the your account all right so now i want to go into how to publish your book so you click on the bookshelf the section for the bookshelf and then you click on the create that's the plus create that is huge on the screen once you click on the plus create that is big on the screen it asks if you want to create an ebook a paper book or a hard copy book um it will create you can create a paperback book all right so we we've clicked on create a paperback book we want our book to be um in english the title of the book we're going to put it in there the subtitle we're going to put it in there if it's going to be a book that has series you put it in there for the purpose of um this example my book is a is a 10 book series so it's one series but it's, it's a series of books 10 of them in one in, in one so i put it there add to the series as i bring up a book i've added to the series so you can add the name of the series uh, if you want and then all of that i didn't add a book title so then you don't need an edition number if you're not changing the edition if you have authors that you'd like to add in there you add them in there if anybody contributed is an author an editor um and any of these ones um rules you include their names in, the, in there as well then put the description of your book this is the description that um your sellers your buyers will see when they're on amazon it's just a small description that you see there maximum is four thousand characters you have this is where you say do you have the um copyright yes or no and is there any sexual explicit images no and then you go on and on and on about your categories your keywords are very important for you to put it in there they're for children it's a kids book and all of that so that's very important um if you're writing adult books you put that in as well i had mentioned the release date and that's where i mentioned that if you want to market first before publishing you can do that or if you want to publish first so it all depends on you um if you want to publish at a later date you can 
you can publish at a later date by scheduling your book's release and telling people, oh, it's going to come out on September 29th. And then they're able to look out for it. And once it's released, they buy the book. And then once you're done, um, you upload. The next content will be for you to upload your, your book. But for the purpose of this, um, I'm going to just show you what I have already done um, in mine. So in mine, I'm just going to close this. In mine, you will see that when you look at the category on the left hand side, there's something called draft and there's something called live session. So live means that when you when you type the name of this one or when you search for it on Amazon, it's live. It's there. You can purchase it. Draft means that um, you don't. You might have put in your information and all of that, but it's not live on Amazon. It's, you still need some work. So check the email that you're registered with to see what work you need. Sometimes it might be the sizing, it might be the um, different things, you know, and then you just put it in there, um, make the changes, and then you make it go live. So you can also see that for this one, we have... Um, other books here that are live on Amazon as well. So for this particular book, what you will see here is um, the cost of the book. And that's the same book I was showing you on Canva, The Humble Shepherd and how I created it. Um, once, you, once you do all of it and you fill everything out by yourself, you can click on publish and you will be able to publish your book. Your book is live and everything is good to go. You will click where you want Amazon to have it sold. I click pretty much every Amazon store. Sell it to all the Amazon stores, whether it's US, UK, Japan, Canada, China, wherever it is, just sell it there. And you will be you know, intrigued to know that quite a number of times when you go in there and you see somebody bought your book or your journal from Kuwait, another one from Qatar, another one from, you know, as in, you're like, oh, wow, this is amazing, you know, because how else would you have gotten that book to, into the hands of people like that, if not for a platform like Amazon? Okay, so we publish our book, and once we finish publishing um, our book, it is live and it is good to go. And you can actually check Amazon to see whether it is truly there after you have done that. So you click on the Humble Shepherd. That's it. There you go. That's my book there. And when you see that it was asking for a front page, upload back page and all of that, this is where all of that comes in. So the front page is here, the back page is here that you would see. And that's that's it, you know, that's the book. This is where the description I was talking about is. Just put a short description. Yes, you might have 4,000 um, characters. You might want to use all of them or you might not need to use all of them. So far you get your points straight ahead to to to, to the to where you want it to be. Just be straightforward, be concise, so that at a go, people who want to buy it know exactly what they're getting into. And that's mostly it. One additional thing I wanted to, us to note is how to, excuse me, is how to actually market your book. So there's this platform I love to use, and it is called um, Place It. Just like the name says, yes, Place It. So I'm just gonna show that to you. Um, so it is place it dot net. When you click place it dot net, um, your system will go to place it. You can either sign in or sign on. There is a free version of it, but Disclaimer or rather full disclosure, the free version has a watermark, so you don't want to, you might want to pay for it afterwards. So you can put your logo, not your logo, but you can put your image on a shirt, on, on anything to let them see, you know, to, to help you market it, even though you don't have models that are helping you to do it. Once you put the logo in there, it does, you know, what you want it to do, and it's also good. I'm just going to show you. Um, what I have downloaded so far with regards to the Humble Shepherd book. So you saw the Humble Shepherd book and that's it. You know, you can actually look at, um, yeah, and you can download as well. So I just clicked on download and downloaded this one. I'm just going to open it so that you can see what it looks like. So what I did was I just downloaded my book on 
um, one of the images that I really liked. And because my book is a children's book, I downloaded it on the image for a father reading to his son. Look at it. These are not my models. These are not people I know, but these are mock-ups. So I used um, Place It for my mock-ups. And you can use Place It for pretty much anything, whether it's a truck company, it's food company, it is children's books, whatever, even a movie. You can use it for anything pretty much. And it, it has a lot of things in there that are that are really nice that I think are really cool, you know in there so this is another one that i really liked and i used but a lot of it you'll see that i'm using kids um kids at least kids and in, in the picture somehow whether they're the ones reading it or they're being read too that's um one thing i like all right so this is it the humble shepherd and it helps it also helps you to know you know how to do all of these mock-ups that you always find out there this is one that i used to wonder how i could do and i just didn't realize that i could get it on place it and now i have it on place it and i can send it to my platform through instagram facebook you know just my network through whatsapp and just send it to them that he my book just came out please make sure to purchase it and that's the picture you know and that's pretty much most of it so make sure that you get your content your script you get your images from the ai platform excuse me i think i'm jet lag you get your script from the ai pla your images your scripts all from ai and then you publish it on amazon kdp after you publish it, you market your book or market before publishing your choice and that's it the word of God is already on its way out to different countries out there. So it's important for you to make sure that um, you use the skills that God has given you for the purpose of the kingdom. You know, that's very important. I cannot overestimate that, or, um, overstate that. Please make sure that um, the skills that you have learned, as you can see, there are not many apps that I used. Um, um, ChatGPT and Canva and Ideogram. Um, you're already on your way. You're an author, and you are actually propagating the word. And for me, I feel it's a win-win. You're being fulfilled because you're an author. You're also getting royalties for it. So you have been paid, um, for it, and you're also getting the um, um, sense of the fact that the word of God is being spread out there. And it's so awesome that children will want to know, you know, more about the word of God. They want to learn go, when's the next book coming out? I really like the way this one ended and things like that. So even in your bedroom, you might want to cut out one of the um, procedures, which might be the chat GPT side. If you want to already have an idea of the script that you want, maybe you already have like a vision of what God is telling you to write about and it just was placed on your heart. Then you can do that as well and then cut out the chat gpt part create your content and just get ideogram to get your images and all of that and get well on your way to be one of the best selling authors if you have any questions let me know and i think that will be it for now have a wonderful rest of the day and god bless you mm -hmm. A round of applause for all our two speakers so far. Yeah. Like something in the comment, like something in the comment. Write something in the comment like I used to say. Awesome, awesome. Everybody write awesome very fast. Let's very, very, very fast. Let's awesome session. Please, let's do that before we go to the next person. If you have your question, we're going to address it. Give it a word. Give them a blessing. Right. Say something to them. This is wonderful. All your questions will be addressed. All right. Will be addressed to or be attended to. Okay. Well, please be fast with your question because any question that is not in the comment, we may not be able to go back to it. Awesome. 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 We have another general in the house. The other general is counterfeit. We have the generals. If you're watching us, whether you're watching live here, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, anyway, you're watching later, this is awesome. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Sister Olubu Solaja, thank you so much for that intro, introduction, all that. Thank you so much. Now, I'm going to another wonderful person without wasting much of our time. We are having another general in the house. Hey, hey, hey. Dollar or Monira in the house. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Properly? Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Can you can you increase the volume? Increase the volume? Increase um, the volume? 
This is as high as I can go. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just uh, joking. Oh, okay. Go ahead. All right. Um, good afternoon, evening, morning, all that. I'm going to go straight to it. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. All right, can you all see my screen? Hello, can, can you see my yes, screen? Yes, we can. We can okay. see. All right, see. okay. So today um, I'm gonna actually deal with a, it's, it's a topic within several larger topics of all this thing about artificial intelligence. Um, I'm dealing with the topic of prompt, prompt, the prompt formula. Well, it's generally called prompt engineering, which in that in itself is a major course. Uh, it, it's, I mean, there's just so much information to share, but we won't be doing that today. I'm just gonna focus, I'm gonna zero in on actually, how do you actually ask the question to get the information out of uh, all these AI tools like ChatGPT, like, you know, Copilot, all the different tools that we've heard of today, how to write it out such to get that right picture, how to, you know, all of that. And so I'm dealing with the prompt formula for Christian drama ministers and content creators. So today I'm going to be introducing that prompt formula, which is a powerful tool in itself for Christian drama ministers and content content creators, and it's also, it, it, it'll help you effectively communicate um, with these uh, AI tools. So you're gonna actually learn how to generate, how to tailor your content um, for the creative process, process that you have to get into or ministry projects and all that script writing. I'm gonna be going a bit fast, but if I'm going too fast, well, Paul, I know you're gonna slow me down a little bit, okay? All right. But let me first say, okay, what is prompt engineering? I'm, I'm just going to say that top level title because it's only uh, prompt. the prompt formula is a subset of prompt engineering. So what is prompt engineering itself? That's creating specific inputs to AI models to generate desired outputs. That's said it simply. And the importance of that really is to tailor your prompts and it, to help it focus the content that you want to get out of the AI tool. I've got a little um, snippet of a title here. I saw this um, this uh, definition that I thought, let me share. Prompt engineering is the art of crafting inputs that guide AI models to generate useful and relevant outputs, okay? It's an iterative process combining creativity and technical skill. So don't worry, you don't have to be too IT savvy to get it. If you can speak some good English, if you just if you can really understand what you want to get out of it, you know the good thing about this this process is you put in one prompt. If it doesn't get bring you what you really want, you kind of modify it a bit. I'm going to show you how you can do some tweaks to your prompt to get the best out of it. So, what is a prompt formula? A structure or guide used to communicate clearly with IT tools to get tailored and effective responses. I've already said that earlier. And it's to generate the right content for your creative pro process. So these are the, hold on, let me get this thing out of the way. So these are the core elements of the prompt formula. We have six of them. And I'm gonna go through them and I'll tell you the significance of each one. So the first prompt, the first portion of the prompt and we're going to be doing examples so you understand, you get a practical um, idea of what I'm talking about now. Uh, the first portion of the prompt is the task. Um, that is, your, your, it's, it's, the, it's the verb that you use to ask the, um, you're, you're trying to ask the AI, uh, to inform the AI, the AI tool what it's supposed to do. Like as a screen now, create. Create is the verb. Create a script outline for a Christian drama about forgiveness. 
the second one, and that ta- that prompt, I mean, t- the task is a very important uh, part of the prompt formula. You always have, you're telling the AI tool what to do. You're, you're asking it what to, oh, you're, yeah, you're informing it or what you want. You're asking it what you want or you're telling it what you want. So the next one is, yeah, you can be asking it, but you also have to kind of have a, a context. What's the background or the setting? And what I mean by that is it's like, you will say something like, set in modern times involving a father and son showing the biblical concept of forgiveness. That's your your background. That's the area of what you want it to to kind of pull out, to retrieve from all the, the massive database. Then the third thing, um, these first, the task and content is very important. This third one, the persona. Now, the persona really is like, um, who is the person asking or what, what do you want or how do you want the AI tool to, what do you want the AI tool to be? What, what do you want it to be? I mean, like for instance, I am a drama minister. So as a drama minister, I want you to get me this information. So, you know, when you're a drama minister, the sort of information you would churn out will be different from if you're a doctor or if you're a lawyer. So that's that's you doing the person now. You have to define that. So, and it could be in a certain style or a voice. I mean, an example is write this form, write this from the perspective of a humble preacher teaching a young audience. We could equally say, uh, you know, write it from the perspective of a director that is shooting a movie. They want to kind of get some information out differently from how a DOP will get information out. If you, I hope you're getting it. Then the fourth uh, portion, and all these ones are they're, they're important, but you know sometimes you could do without them. But if you have them, they will improve the output that you will get. So exam exemplar, which is really provide examples of your expected output. An example is like a like a script that includes dialogue, a moral takeaway, a closing prayer. You know um, your inquiring about something you know so give examples of what you the sort of things you want like for instance um no let me give my examples later on so i won't waste time um a format what format do you want it to come in because you can churn out someone was asked and put it in the comment can we take get um pictures out of chat gpt yes you can now you can get pictures you can get graphs you can get tables you can get list items you just need to inform it how you want the information that is given to you out okay as a script writer you might say um give me dialogue or give me a synopsis all these are ways of you to get information out so you need to describe that okay um where am i that's format Okay, so the last one is the tone. So what you're going to be doing here is you're choosing the mood or the emotion, um, how you want the information that is coming at you to be. Do you want it to be uh, funny? Do you want it to be like very serious or very professional? Or do you want it to have like a, an inspirational touch to it? Do you want it to be empath? Em- I can never pronounce this word, you know, for you to have a feeling for you to be, I don't know the word when I get it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, but you know, those kind of tones, you do you want to, do you want it to be friendly? Do you want it to be humorous? Do you also want it to cater for children? So you make it a bit more, you tone down your, you tone down the English that is coming out or whatever language it's coming out. You tone it down so that the children can understand it. You won't use big grammar and all that. You use, small, you know, so that's what you define with the tone. Let's, let's start with an example for a drama script prompt. And I'm focusing on drama ministers and content creators uh, here because I had to zero in because this is really very vast. But I'm zeroing in so you can actually relate immediately. So uh, an example of a prompt is write, write, which is the verb, remember, a five-minute skit. You know, you're, you're giving it your instruction, the format, for a Christian youth drama group about trust in God. 
set during a school exam. You see, you're, 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 you're telling in the background. Now, you're also including some formats here. Include three characters, a Bible verse on faith, and end with a prayer. The tone should be relatable and inspiring. Do you get it? Another one. The title is The Lost Sheep, Finding the Way Back to God. Let's read this one. Write a Christian drama about a person who strays from their faith, much like the parable of the lost sheep. Do you see how you're, you're already setting the content and the context? Uh, you know, so it, it'll zero in on information that really, really relates to this. The character should experience moments of doubt and struggle, but through a series of events and encounters, find their way back to God's love and grace. Now, this is extra. Consider including dialogue. So you're also trying to get it to also zero in on some dialogue that reflects their internal conflict and, in, and the encouragement they receive from others who trust in God. See, all that, you can imagine, that's kind of like a little sub synopsis as it is. If you turn that in, and I'll let you, guys, if you, if you have your JackDB open, you can actually put this prompt in and you see what it will turn out for you. Um, did I jump? Okay. I'm giving you now because I know we might not have enough time. I've done some pre. I, I wrote some prompts and I and I've sh I'm showing you what was generated. And bear in mind, if you write the same prompt, you might not actually get the same information. In fact, you won't get the same information. So, but the more the more you, you can, there's a way you can just regenerate. You say, okay, ask for more, tell me more, and then you'll get a different thing if it's not quite to how you want it. So this one I I wrote. Given because I was thinking, okay, what examples can I even give for this for this um, presentation, this workshop? And so I said, so I'm ask, I'm actually asking ChatGPT to help me out too here. Given a presentation on how to write prompts, provide an example of a Christian drama prompt. And so what it gave me was this: when given a presentation on writing prompts, the goal is to guide writers in creating thoughtful and engaging content. Here's a step-by-step, -step, right? And, and it goes on to give me the step-by-step, -step, right? Oops. Um, so it's saying we start with a biblical theme, provide context, you know, encourage the character development and all that. And then this is what it comes out with. The prodigal son returns, a modern twist. And it says, the prompt is, imagine a young man who leaves his family and faith to pursue worldly desires. Years later, he finds himself broken and lost. Write a drama depicting his journey back to his family and more importantly, to God. Includes key moments where he faces temptations, encounters compassion believers, and ultimately experiences the power of forgiveness and grace. Focus on how his relationship with God is restored through love and repentance, much like the parable of the prodigal son. And they even quote the scripture. So can you imagine if you write, if you now put that prompt in, do you see how robust that prompt is? It will give you so much information. And if when you get the information, if it's not quite what you want, you now will tweak it to, to your satisfaction. Another one. Write an example of a Christian drama prompt. This is another example. Faith in the storm, trusting God in difficult times. It, gets, it gave me all of this information. So it even gave me ideas of characters. So you see, this is helping you out, at least getting your mindset. Okay, I've got this idea. How can I really start? I, I've got a writer's block. This can help you kind of get your juices flowing. Remember, it's not the chat. I mean, artificial intelligence is not going to give you everything. You still need that inspiration from the Holy Spirit. You still need to get that input. Okay, so it's saying here the plot. Anna is struggling with personal and financial challenges. Her faith is shaken and all that stuff, you know. And then it even gives you a script ex um, excerpt too. So this is this is you know illustrating the, and and the whole this particular one is illustrating the importance of trusting God through hardships and help the audience reflect on their faith. So it's actually it's kind of helping you, inspiring you for you to now get into it and and then build on it.
Okay, so those are some examples of actual prompts. How can we really use these prompts? One, we can use it to generate script ideas of which, you know, what we just did that. So the scenario is, okay, you need inspiration for a drama skit about faith during adversity, right? So the prompt that you would write for this one will be, provide three creative story ideas for a Christian drama that illustrates the theme of faith overcoming adversity. And so the expected output that you want to see is the unique plot ideas that can further develop they can finally be developed into scripts. What I've done is I went ahead and did that. And this is what it gave me. One, the, ref the refuge, they called it the refuge of grace. And it says set during a, national, a natural disaster. This story follows a family whose home and livelihood are destroyed. As they struggle to rebuild, they face despair and blah, blah. You know, so it's given me ideas you know, because I'm asking for create, uh, creative story ideas. So these are, it turned out these three ideas. If you had said, churn out, um, provide five, ten, it would give you five or ten. So, but the, notice I said three. So that's why it gave me three. Now, if these ideas are not to your satisfaction or you want to get some more, you just hit the regenerate button. Or if it's chat GPT you're using, we hit, well, most of them hit the regenerate button and it will churn out some more. Okay, another way you can use prompts is in, in using it to do, for character development. Okay, your, your, uh, this one is a develop a character who undergoes a spiritual transformation. So the prompt that I would write is this character who starts as a skeptic and becomes a devout Christian by the end of the story. So the detail, the output I'm expecting is a detailed character arc with emotional and spiritual depth. I went ahead and I produced that too. I went into chat GPT. Chat, chat, well, I got to uh, chat, chat GPT and this is what it turned out for me. John, a 35-year-old investigative journalist, starts as a, sta a staunch skeptic doubting the existence of God. His job often involves debunking supernatural claims and he enjoys exposing what he views as the flaws of religion. Assignment changes everything when he, he's asked with investigate um he's he's when he's tasked with investigating the life of a devout Christian woman miraculously healed from a terminal illness. Throughout his research, John interviews various people in her community and studies historical evidence from miracles. Are you seeing that it's giving you some you know idea of how you can actually develop the character? At first, he dismisses the stories as exaggerations, but a few events, especially witnessing the inexplicable healing of another terminally ill individual, rattle his skeptical worldview. Seeking clarity, John turns to historical sources, and his investigation into the life of Jesus leads him to encounter the works of Christians, thinkers like N.T. Wright, blah, blah, and, and it goes on. And so do you see how it's, helped you develop that character. And so you now go forward and build it even more as a, a script writer. So that's to do with character. So that's another way you can use these prompts. Another one is to, you can use it for rehearsing scenarios, uh, rehearsal scenarios, you know, create different scenarios to help actors explore their characters. You know, when you get on set or you're reading your script as a, as a drama, uh, as an actor, you're reading your script and how can I really depict this? How can I really get into the, the flow of this character? You know, and you can easily use this to, to, to get ideas, let it take you from different scenarios. So this prompt here says, generate three different scenarios where the character must choose between their faith and personal gain. I didn't do a, a sample of that one so that we can get on with this, this uh, prompt lecture. So another way is spiritual reflection, you know. So you want to, incorp by incorporating a biblical uh, passage into a scene, you want to kind of see. So a prompt is write a dialogue that reflects the message of Matthew 5, 16, emphasizing the importance of being a light to others. Obviously, the output that we're expecting is a, spirit a spiritually rich dialogue that can be used directly in your script. 
Another way to use uh, the prompts is social media content creation. I'm going to this, I'm gonna, cause I think I've talked so much about script. Let's talk about the content creation side of things, how you can use prompting. So the prompt is create a week long social media plan for a Christian drama ministry, promoting an upcoming play about forgiveness. So the expected output is daily posts, captions and engagement strategies. I'm sure all of you who are content creators will be kind of like, oh, this is a godsend because I did, I did, um, I put this prompt in and this is what it turned out. So it says, here's a week long social media plan. So it gave me day one announcement post, day two behind the scenes video, day three character spotlights, you know, day four testimonial post, day five devo devotional on devotional on forgiveness, you know, and it tells you the platforms to put it on and all that. Then day six countdown, you know, you know, the content with two days left with a countdown image or video teaser. It's, it suggests things that you should do with on, on those days. Then the final day seven is the final invitation. You know, all the platforms, you put all the reminders out. So it's kind of helping you plan, you know, your content and, and how you're going to disseminate it. I'd like to also just kind of like highlight some mistakes that we should try and avoid. One is writing vague prompts. You know, if you just write, uh, uh, um, write me a Christian drama script, it's so vague that you don't even know what you'll get and it'll probably like be stunned and it might just give you gobbledygook. Because you want to be focused, you want to kind of zero in on what you want. Another thing you also need to pay attention to is do not ignore the tone, you know, because you don't want to write a, a script uh, that is so serious, that it has such a serious tone to it when you want it to be more of a, a comedy thing or you want it for children, you, don't, you, you know, or you want a, a script to have that kind of... Um, Mm, reflective tone to it. Uh, so you have to kind of write that. You have to embed that in your prompt. Then another thing, and I've mentioned this several times, this um, course is you also, when you get a one result, if it's not quite to your satisfaction, just re, re uh, adjust it, send it out again. It'll churn out some more information. I did that a couple of times to some of the things I was about to present and I saw the differences in the style of how it gave me information, you know, and I was able to kind of fine tune and take what I needed out of it. So that is very important. You'll get, I mean, especially for even the picture generation, you get what you, you, uh, you prompt it for a particular picture. And then when you get the picture, I'm like, it's not quite it. Or you might just say, okay, let's see what else it will bring. You prompt it again and it will bring some more and some more. And then you, you're, you're able to kind of select the one that you really like. So in conclusion, I'm emphasizing this. I'm overemphasizing it because I know there's a class of people that say, oh, AI is the devil. It's not blah, blah, blah. No matter what you're doing with all this artificial intelligence and all that. Yes, it can write you drama scripts. Yes, it can do all these things. However, you do still need to engage the Holy Spirit to direct you, to guide you. You know, even when you churn something out, you still need to kind of like use that spiritual eye to kind of review it. And just remember all these things that are that we're getting from the art. It's it's things that people have put in the in the cyberspace. So you also need to uh, check it. That is correct information, you know. So I'll emphasize on that. The Holy Spirit is key in whatever you're doing. You all know that. Just be prayerful and, you know, you'll get through. And it's a useful tool. I mean, this tool is such that it can help you become more efficient. Look at how it churned out that timetable for me for the social media platforms, you know, it will help you generate skits, it will help you do outlines. There's much more that it will help you do that I can't really start to emphasize here because of the time. It'll make you, you'll be consistent in your messages. It'll also boost you in your storytelling if you have a writer's block or something like that. 
practical applications. You use it, you can use it to write new skits, create devotionals. You can generate sermon outlines. Um, you know, just con conclusion. You know, it, it'll it, it opens doors for your creativity. You know, and it'll also help you engage the audience with modern scenarios. You know how, remember uh, my co uh, uh Sister Bumi, she, where, where she had generated something that had a, an English name, she wanted to kind of hone it in for it to kind of fit with African tone. You know, you could kind of modernize it, you can change the prompts a bit, all of that, you know, to focus on your particular um, scenario. And obviously, if you harness this creative power, the AI's creative power, it'll amplify your message. It'll make you more effective, more productive, you know. So just craft your prompts that lead to transformative Christian content. Thank you very much. Wow. I don't know whether we have time to do any practical yeah, we, going, but yes. I want to give time for well, questions. Good. I know there was a whole lot uh, let's quickly uh, let's quickly take the questions. Our time is fast spent, but I tell you, this is wonderful. Where's my sister? Asta Busala, God bless you, ma. I I appreciate you because I'm not the only one here. I want to thank off all of you. Yes, let me quickly take some one or two questions. And I please, if you're one of the facilitators, check the comment and respond to people. Uh, over there. But time. Okay, and um, I, will, I will run everything through. Then everybody write something about this session. Write something, write something, write something. What do you feel? How do you feel it? Say it, 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 say it. All right. I also brought some of my community friends, community members to this platform today because I want them to get something. All right, let me quickly uh, say, let me read. And it has flown, flown away. Please, you can re, you can uh, you can um, retype it. Okay, somebody talk about ChatGPT that you can get that one. Uh, he's already written ideogram, ideogram generation, Canva for templates. Uh, our sister will also they grab that one and drop it down for all of us for mock up. Okay, so somebody was already asking that was that was that's been answered. Consistent character. Uh, uh, from uh, Brother Molulu. Now we also have placeit.net, check it and all that. As uh, somebody said, somebody said, uh, thanks for a lot. This we literally just wrote, publish and new marketing a book in less than one hour. That's it. If you know, you know, like I used to say to my community yeah. people, if you know, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. Here's the question somebody said, can all this be achieved free? Uh, well, Sister Lubukola Agnes, you need to buy patience. Patience, patience, patience. But the the people we answer you, which app is for marketing, ma? That is to sister, um, uh, sister Bumi. That is to you, please. Uh, which kind of marketing strategy are we going to use? Because you are just telling us you are receiving a lot, a lot, and you are happy. People are buying the book all over the world. So somebody say, can can many apps? Can one have several KDP accounts? Mm -hmm. Several KDP accounts. Okay, several KDP accounts. Please, what is the name of that marketing tool? The marketing again is coming. All right, then somebody say any AI tool specifically to help with movie posters. All uh, right, creating mm -hmm. excellent presentation. Thank you so much. I've uh, done the class. Uh, okay. Well, okay. Just, just, just to say this. Um, what we've done today is just the icing on the. It's just it's, it's not even, it's, a it's yeah, a the tip. Now uh, I I know uh, brother Mululu he had mentioned earlier that we we involved in an organization where we actually would do uh, an actual full blown AI camp. You are free to, uh, we put, I think we put the uh, WhatsApp group in the forum where we're all learning from each other. You see, we're all in there. Like some of the things that brother Mululu did, I'm learning from. You know, so we're all kind of zeroing on our skills so much. It's just so much out there. I mean, I'm amazed I mean, by, you know, the, the characters that were, and I can still remember when he just started and I'm like, wow, you've gotten that far. Okay, I need to kind of zero mm. in. 
There's yeah. just so much to do. I mean, it's it's really, you really just have to be passionate about it. And don't get overwhelmed by trying to do too many things, zero in on one, no, no, no. take it one at a time, you know, because if you, if, you, you yeah, it will blow you. And, yeah. In fact, yeah, uh, most of what, that, yes. most, uh, sorry, sorry, what most, I, I had to just, if you notice the video for my presentation, it was even sped up. I can't cover everything. There is so mm -hmm. much that I wanted to say, but I can't. We can't say everything. Don't worry. Book. Don't worry. We are, we are, we are here for <laughs> you. <laughs> next year, next year is another year. Very close by. Oh, well, 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 just one book. thing I, I want to know. Just one thing I want to note for those who are venturing into editing, I would advise you explore this app called CapCut. That CapCut yep. covered that transcribing, subtitling, all the things that some other AIs were doing individually, CapCut can do almost everything. Mm -hmm. I've been exploring CapCut and I'm shocked that <laughs> some people don't know what this thing can do. That's, That's another, another... Another, yeah, another one is Canva. <laughs> Canva actually... Yes, Canva is, is another more, one. This is more where, if you're a non-profit organization. <laughs> if you're a non-profit yeah. organization, you can try and apply for yeah. the the uh, version which is free, and it has a whole suite I, of things. I use the free version of Canva to create a video intro for somebody. Wow! Yes, Canva. That's just the free version. Video intro. Oh, right. Somebody asked a question. Okay. Somebody asked a question, sir. Can one add a full animated video without first using the real people? Yes, you and can. somebody also asks, "What about plagiarism concern?" Yeah, now um, on the case of the, um, I, I don't know what aspect of plagiarism the person is talking about. But when you like some of those uh, sites, I went as far as subscribing to some of them because some of the subscriptions give you the opportunity to own your content. But if you are using the free version, whatever you generate can be used by any other person. Yep. So, so it's one of the perks of when you are able to. So we are talking about originality is not is not just on the surface because whatever you generate, if you give it the same prompt, I can have the same prompt too. That means if you get higher, like a premium, then you can actually get your specific idea out. Yeah, but because, just like because I had everybody say saying that. Yeah, you, you can. You can put a pre if you put a prompt to generate something. By the time you put that same prompt again, you not get the same thing. Yeah, your answer, has been, your question. Sorry, sir. Your question will be answered uh, when somebody say, "How do you avoid coming up with scripts and story? To your uniqueness. Look at the prompt uh, engineer our sister just mentioned. Yeah, uh, she mentioned it. Yes, ma'am. There's so you can get so many ideas. I mean, yeah, avoid coming up with scripts. I actually, actually, I must confess. About two months ago, my drama team, we were like, ah, we have to minister. We co all couldn't think of what to do. So we just kind of put in a, 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 a scripture we, we, and, it, and it churned out a script. And, and we looked at it and we're like, wow, we didn't even have to do much to it. But we said, ah, no, we still have to do put our own spin to it. But it was that easy that we were able to kind of um, act it out. So it... it the sky is the limit right now. All right. Remember, Thank you so much. Remember, yes, ma'am. The Holy Spirit is key. Key is the key. Yes. Mm. That. AI, is I love that. AI, is not Every other thing. AI is not replacing your creative replacing. process. AI exactly. is I love that what you said. Mm -hmm. AI is complementing your creative yeah. process. It's I love that. More, it's maximizing your effort, your productivity. Always, you always remember that it's not to replace; it's just to maximize your skills. Yeah, I mean, God has it's, given you; He's given you those gifts; He's perfected it already in you. But He's also giving you these different tools. Please can Odoma, Odoma, Odoma. Can everybody write? Holy Spirit is the key. <laughs> is the key? Can everybody write in the comment, please, so that you don't forget? You don't forget. You don't forget. Please write. Oh. Everybody, write it in the comment right now. Write the comment. We have come to the end of the thing, but we will tell you this is not the end. Don't go. We have some information for you, but yeah. we want to make sure they give us something. The, the link to the WhatsApp has been sent, and uh, a lot of things have been answered also. But I'm only mentioned the AI website. Some people for recap, we have a recraft.ai. Recraft, craft. Don't add which. 
Just read craft. Don't add which. Okay. CGDream.ai. CGD.ai. Are you writing? Okay. Let me also write. Okay. I know she it will give me. E 11 labs. 11 labs.io. 11 labs.io. Then full course under collab. Full course. That is F O O O C U S underscore C O L A B. Okay. All right. So, and um, please just calm down, everybody. If you stay with us, we have your email, we have your that's something we're going to get back to you by the grace of God. So, please, in case you don't drop your email before and you want to be getting information after this film festival, please drop your email right now. Right now, right now, our, our managers will pick it up from there. Please drop your email right now. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. It's like we should continue, but we cannot continue because the film show is coming up very shortly and we don't want to take much of our time. Um, thank you very much. I hope you give this all the technical, please. We thank you very much, Sister Febisola. Thank you so much. All the managers, everyone, please, we appreciate all of you. All of you that have uh, that don't worry, you have not missed anything. Even if you are just logging in right now, you have not missed anything. Everything you have not missed too much. <laughs> Let me put that way. You have not much, you have not missed too much. You missed, but you're not not too much. So, and uh, this is a wonderful thing. We're talking about nursing, the role and the power of AI in creating a Christian content. And also you can use it in the offices and everything. a uh, few words I want to say before. Uh, we get the information. We're still going back to the main main group. You have seen our navigator. The navigator will help you a lot. You can go to film screening, the room that you like on a, a, a navigator, and it's going to be wonderful. Uh, let me ask one more question before I release our facilitator. These are generals. Ah! Okay. What? what? Give, me, give me one word or a few words. For these people you have taught today, they, they want them to always remember. Okay, a few words. Um, mm. Scripture makes us know that with God, all things are possible. Because when He created this world, He looked at it and said everything was good. In everything that we need, He has given unto us. And this is one of the things that we are seeing now. We're able to create a lot of things that will push his word, that will push the gospel. So for everyone that is here, I see you as you have been part of this uh, workshop and as you are living here, it's this seed that has been sown will begin to manifest in your lives. Amen. That makes... <laughs> Amen. That so, makes sense. Yes, oh, now to Sister Dollar, the only dollar that spent Munaira inside. Okay, let's go. Sister D, your turn. All right. So please don't forget. We appreciate all of you for wait for the information we have for you. Okay. We have the, some information for you. Please don't go away. We have some information where you navigate. And we're going to play those things for you. I, I, Sister Bumi Ajagunov, what do you have for us? What do you have for us? Okay, am I the only one seeing myself? <laughs> I'm, seeing, I'm seeing you. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Bumi, over to you. Let's hear you. Let's hear you briefly. We are waiting for the information also. Don't worry. Don't go away. The navigator is there for you. What led you to this place? Especially all the community members from the Telegram, from the YouTube, from the Facebook, from everywhere. All right, Sister my sister has dropped it, so you can think it, then you can do it. The Holy Spirit will help you to achieve it. I love that. You can think it, you can do it. The Holy Spirit will help you to achieve it. And what Sister Dollar has said is the Holy Spirit is the key. Uh, at, at this doctor, I'm so happy. I'm so delighted to let us know that it's not him that run it or will it, but the Lord that show it mercy. And when God is showing mercy, I want to tell you that mercy is something you cannot just quantify. Mercy is not something you want to say, oh, this has been done, this has to be done, and all that, and all that. So, But when the mercy of God is upon your life, 
is beyond AI. Okay, is beyond AI. Please go and work with what you have learned. Uh, we are waiting for the information right now. Yes, Zabumi, I want you to speak. Ah, let me see your face now. Ah, what is it, Jeff? Oh, yeah, unmute yourself before okay. I change my mind. Oh, Sister Dollar had the internet issues. She's trying to restart her system. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, Sister Abumi, let me hear your voice. We are done, right. okay? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I think for me, I'll say, if you can think it, you can do it. And just have the Holy Spirit help you. Um, there are quite a few things that I have put in in the recent times with regards to the Bible and, you know, just scriptures out there. And it's in different platforms, whether it is a book, whether it is a, a com you know, as in different different ways. Um, just think about it, research it, get onto, you know, seeing what others have done, what others are recommending. And with the help of the Holy Spirit and prayers, you would be able to achieve it. That's my perspective. Like the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing will follow. So you might be thinking, hey, my bank account is suffering or one, my family is suffering or something is suffering. You know, something has to give. But when you seek God's face first and say, Father, I want to do a film. I want to do a drama. I want to do a comic book, a children's book, just something to propagate the word. Every other thing will fall in line. God will help you, you know, and tell you what to do, how to do it. When to do it is also important because the timing also matters but just make yourself available for his use there are resources here you know you've heard from brother Omolulu, you've heard from me you've heard from sister dola you've heard from brother paul so just get out there make yourself available and launch launch into it you will be able to achieve it praise god all right thank you so much at first i was thinking ai was speaking only to discover that it was sister Bobby that was speaking. <laughs> i look like shadi <laughs> but I'm Somebody has said so much with the AI. I'm just thinking, I'm like, wow, wow, wow. All right. So thank you very much. It's a very good point, to, a very good place to wrap it up. And I tell you, everybody in the house, all our leaders, all our friends, we thank you so much. We appreciate all of you at this time. Please, workshop seven is closed right now. And please, you can enjoy yourself when you're sitting down, relax, and all that. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook. Even now, we're on TikTok, in case you don't know. ICSF -F -F is on uh, Facebook, is on uh, Instagram, is on TikTok. Wow, when my sister mentioned that, I said, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. God bless you. Till another time, I want to see you. I want to see your wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you, all our facilitators, all the co uh managers and every other person that have been of help to this. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you for the day.